Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerderman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Here for the second time in like three hours because I got a good idea tonight, as every once in a while I do. So I thought, hey, self, you know what you should do? Go through your raw images from last year's Ohio State Michigan game and seeing if you can find Michigan staff member Connor Stallions on the sideline during the Ohio State Michigan game. And uh, I found some pictures and I put them on Twitter and um, now my phone won't stop buzzing. So that's annoying. Um, So I guess, Tony, before we dive into this, let's just preface preface this with all the things these pictures do not mean. Guy number one. They do not mean that they are not proof of anything definitive or illegal, definitively illegal. You are allowed to steal signs in person during a game. That is allowed. That is not a problem. It does not mean that this is the only reason Ohio State lost the football game to Michigan last year. That is also Ohio State coaches have apparently said that they switched up signals in advance of that game or that it it had come out somehow that Ohio State football coaches had switched up signals because they knew that Michigan was stealing signals possibly in advance. And so they switched things up. So that does not mean that this is the reason Michigan Michigan beat Ohio State last year. Okay. Uh, Anything else that it does not mean, Tony? I want to make sure I'm covering all my bases before we talk about what it does potentially mean. No, I think you're exactly right there. Uh, it doesn't mean that crimes have been committed, NCA violations have been committed just based on the photos that we are talking about. So yes, that's, we've laid that groundwork. Now let's begin the show. Okay. So here's, I'm just going to go through and uh, I'll throw these up on the screen for you. Um, here's what we're going through. Uh, first photo. This is from the first drive of the game. Uh, there is uh, Connor Stallions. He is in the uh, hat with the white panels on the side. He is kind of the first Michigan staffer to the right of the referee, the linesman with the L on his, jer- on his shirt. He is the first Michigan staffer to the right of that, uh, kind of with his mouth hanging open. That is Connor Stallions. He is right next to uh, Jesse Minter there, who is the defensive coordinator. And then he is... Um, that is Jim Harbaugh there a couple spots away from him. So that's just, just there he is. It's the first drive of the game. He's standing right there on the sideline, right next to the, you know, pretty high profile coaches. Uh, next one, this is, I believe later in that same drive, this is a, a, a picture of Marvin Harrison making a sideline catch. I believe it was ruled incomplete. That really is not the point right now. Uh, this and, and stallions is kind of the closest to the field. He's sort of hanging out over the field again with his mouth open uh, holding a big sheet of white paper in his left hand. Again, Jesse Minter, defensive coordinator, the closest person to him on the sideline. Jim Harbaugh, a couple of people went away. But, you know, what's telling to me about these, Tony, is that the closest person on earth to defensive coordinator Jesse Minter is Connor Stallions, which is kind of interesting if, you know, if the assumption is Connor Stallions has, uh, fi- you know, figured out Ohio State signals in advance and is communicating them to someone, the person who would be communicating them to when Ohio State has the ball would be the defensive coordinator. So he's the closest person to the defensive coordinator. Here's just a little bit more of a zoomed in version of that photo. It's the same photo, just a little a little closer cropped in. And I will apologize that it's a little out of focus and grainy. I will tell you at the time, I was not taking a picture of Connor Stallions. I was taking a picture of Marvin Harrison. So a lot of these are a little grainy and a little in the background, uh, but uh that is that is just a zoomed in version. Uh, the sixty four thousand dollar question on this one, and one that I think a lot of people on Twitter picked up on, is the sheet of that is in the hand of the guy on the right. You know, sort of the, the hand that's right in front of Jim Harbaugh. That person is holding a sheet with some kind of something on there, and it appears to be people gesturing in some way. I do not know what that says. I uh, I tried yelling enhance at my computer uh, repeatedly. And uh, nothing happened, which was disappointing based on what I've seen in the movies. But, you know, there's something on there. There were people on Twitter who thought that was absolutely the smoking gun. They thought that was uh, Connor Stallions holding it. It is not Connor Stallions holding it. I have no idea if it is a smoking gun. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, someone said it was referee signals, which I would assume that 
people on Michigan's sideline would know, you know, like what the signal for holding is or whatever. So I don't think it's probably that, but I don't know what it is. And I don't feel like we need to speculate on it. We can, you know, if, if people figure it out, if someone has a better shot of it, maybe that's, uh, maybe, maybe that can uh, be more persuasive to people. I just, I don't want to oversell that right now. That's just, we, I have what I have. Again, I was not shooting, uh, I was not shooting that, uh, for a Connor Stallions picture at the time. Uh, n- the last one that I wanted to put up here, this is interesting because look, the, in the foreground of this picture is the guy I was taking a picture of. Uh, and then it's Tanner McAllister, who was a safety on last year's Ohio State team. This is when Ohio State was on defense on the field. You know who, notice who Connor Stallions is standing next to in this one. That is Sharon Moore. He was the co-offensive coordinator for Michigan last year. So while Ohio State is on the, uh, on offense, he's standing next to Jesse Minter in a couple pictures. And then where, when I've got him on, in the sidelines, when Ohio State's on defense, he's standing next to Sharon Moore, who is the co-offensive coordinator at the time. So what this means to me, Tony, is not, you know, th- this is not, hey, look, this is Michigan breaking the rules right here because you are allowed to, you know, this is, this is, not, a, this is not a shot of Connor Stallions or someone in the stands scouting, videotaping in advance. That's what the violation would be. I don't have that. I'm not claiming to have that. What I think these potentially do show is that, you know, there's sort of been this idea that, you know, it's a low level staffer. It's a nobody. They don't even know who he is. You know, there's no, he's right there and he's next to the offensive coordinator when they're on offense and he's next to the defensive coordinator when he's on defense, which tells me he's a pretty active part of this. And, you know, this is, this is not some nobody who they pass in the hall and don't know his name. This is someone who's, you know, I mean, at least, at least in these examples that I found, sure seems to be pretty involved in the game events of the, uh, you know, the events of the game. So, you know, I think that would kind of shoot the idea that this is some low level nobody kind of straight out of the water. Certainly shoots it out of the water when you consider. He's listed as somebody who works in the recruiting department and that you need him to be on the off with the offense, with the defense back to the, the diagram. I believe that is a diagram for the Macarena. So we can go ahead and put that one to bed. Uh, that one is case closed. He was, a, he went to the Naval Academy. So I was thinking like, is this like some sort of semaphore or something where, you know, you put the flags out to signal others. I don't think so. I could not, I could not make it out, but I don't think it was semaphore either. It's very interesting. Uh, if he was just if he's just with one of the of the off with the defense coordinator or the offensive coordinator, that's one thing. Even though we all know what it is, but to be with both kind of eliminates any of the uh, well. This is just some low level staffer, and it also to me would eliminate any lack of knowledge that Jim Harbaugh would or wouldn't have. Like he, this is not somebody who is unknown to him. You're not. So tunnel vision that, that you're not um, you, you, you're oblivious to what your coaches are doing or um, like you, he's not hiding in plain sight, I guess, is what I would say on the sideline. And this is clearly, clearly a something that they are invested in doing. And again, there's nothing illegal about stealing the signals from the sidelines. The question becomes, where did you get the signals? And there, there's there been a bunch that has come out with that. But just being on the sideline like that, I think, as you said, complete, completely eliminates the low-level staffer, eliminates the recruiting guy. Like, how many recruiting guys? And we see Mark Pantone, Ohio State's uh, recruiting director, general manager on the sideline of games. Uh, he's not holding a ream of paper with who knows what on it. Like, this is this is not Michigan's recruiting director. This is a guy that nobody knew existed uh, a little while ago, and now everybody knows he existed. It, it kind of reminds me of the the thing in Independence Day where Jed Hirsch is like, "Well, you don't think hammers actually cost four million dollars, do you?" This is this is like some part of the hidden budget in Michigan's football program, and we're finding out more about what that budget is. But now, like Tom, I hate to break it to you, you're not the only one with these photos. Like you're not the only one who has photos of this stuff. So, now everybody who takes photos of any Michigan games is going to be like, hmm, I wonder what I have. And somebody may have a better image of the 
diagram sheet or just more and more and more of this. And the other thing we're starting to see now is some of this internet sleuthing that is going on with tracking down the, the Venmo stuff. And once you get into the citizen sleuthing stuff, like y- you are bound to find out everything. What's the Arkansas board that got uh, Houston nut fired or got uh, whichever he, uh, Bobby Petrino hog hog nation hog vent, something like that. It was uh, there was, there was you know, once, once the, uh, Arkansas State or Arkansas Message Board dove into that whole thing. They they managed to get a coach fired. Yeah, do not get Twitter dot com uh, attacking you. That's that's not a good way to live. Th- yeah, this is this is something that. Well, first of all, I apologize to all my fellow photographers who are not planning on digging through their memory cards tonight. And I, several of them got tagged in the replies to that. So sorry, I apologize. Was not trying to ruin your Monday evening. Um, yeah, it just. I, I also want to spe- mention there are a couple's pictures where I'm pretty sure I see him in the background and he's not directly right next to someone. So this is not every single time, but those, you know, the defensive plays, those are two separate drives because in one of them, the sun is on his face because they're going from the uh, North end of the horseshoe to the South end of the horseshoe because it was a first quarter. And then uh, the, uh, the next one, he is, uh, um, he's going for the going from the South end to the North end because it's the second quarter. So that was, that was not like, Oh, he was just standing next to him for five minutes. That was two separate drives, two separate quarters. And I just, I don't have that many pictures of him. So I don't have 27 pictures of him on the sidelines to, you know, be a completely conclusive, conclusive encyclopedic run through every single moment of this guy's life or that guy's life during that day. Again, I was not taking pictures of him at the time. He just happened to be in some of the pictures, but it, you know, it, it does it does sort of paint a picture that low level recruiting staffer is probably a little like, you know, when the, uh, the embassy in uh, Cuba has the uh, cultural attache and that guy also has, you know, happens to have spent some time in Langley, Virginia, you know, you got to, there's a little vibe of that too, where it's like, I'm not sure the title on your business card exactly reflects what it is you do here. And I'm, each day we're going to find more and more out about this. Pete Thamel is going to be on it, Ross Dellinger. And you wonder how far it will go, what it will reap. But just what we've seen right now, it's it's hard not to make more of it because we're trying to be responsible and just say, this is what this is. You can draw your own conclusions. Like, uh, what's what's on a sheet? Uh, where, what, where did he get all of the information that, uh, that is on all of his sheets? The, the notebook, where did you accumulate that? And we're seeing more information come out about time. What I would consider a vast network of, um, contacts that he has that he apparently has allegedly has based on reporting and you're getting this information. Uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty fascinating. And as, like Mark Givler has said, the anger coming from the rest of the Big Ten coaches and the rest of the Big Ten de- football departments about this, because while portions of this are illegal, the other portions that they're finding out more and more about are not. And uh, in terms of NCAA, they're, they're they're against the rules and just the anger coming out from the rest of the conference. And there will be no gentlemen's agreement there will be no you know we're all in this together like there are going to be people out for blood on this and it's going to be the people that they've the teams they've already played this year who feel wronged it's going to be people who they've played in 2021 and 2022 because apparently this all started in full force in 2021 and uh, i mean if you want to talk about coincidences you know, that's when michigan stopped losing four games, three, four games a year and started going to the playoffs. And I would be, firstly, I would be annoyed if I was the low level staffer who was responsible for all of this. I'm only making 55 grand a year and I've taken, I've gotten into the playoffs two years in a row, Tom. There's going to be a lot of people who are not thrilled about all of this stuff. I'm sure. Um, Sorry. I was just scrolling through. I was getting DM'd by someone who uh, was expressing consternation that the uh, photo of the play sheet was not, not more clear, which again, sorry, that was not what I was, or, or the, whatever the sign, the, the thing on the side, uh, the guy on the sideline was holding. Um, 
yeah, I, uh, I, again, once again, that was not what I was taking a picture of at the time. So sorry. Uh, it, it's, it is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. And I think what people need to sort of be prepared for is this is not necessarily going to, I think everyone is, is looking at, you know, the drip, drip, drip of information that's coming out right now and saying, you know, at this rate, this is going to be case closed by Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that's the timetable this is going to happen on. And, and I, I am prepared to be wrong, but that is not the timetable. This kind of stuff typically gets resolved on. It typically is much more of a deliberate process and figuring out what, you know, what, uh, um, you know, what, what can you prove? What, what can you, you know, what can you, you know, absolutely authoritatively prove about something? And that's, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of gray area and, you know, you're going to try and slide through any kind of plausible deniability that you can. And, you know, okay. The NCAA just, you know, I think people thought the NCAA had Kansas dead to rights and then they spent like six years and ended up not doing much of anything. So we'll see how this all sort of shakes out. I, there's been a lot of reporting on this from Pete Thamel, from Ross Dellinger, from Dan Wetzel. I mean, like legitimate, good, well-respected national college football writers. So you assume they have the goods, but have they seen the goods as, or have they just been told that this is what's going? And, and you know, sometimes people are excited and they tell you they've got a little more than they have. And I don't know. Maybe they've seen it all. Maybe this is all already to the NCAA. We just we don't know. So. I think people need to just make sure, just patience. This is going to probably take a little while to work itself out. And, you know, it, the people who are the most out for blood, generally those people don't get exactly what they want because they're, you know, looking, they're expecting, you know, I, people in my bench are talking about like the death penalty. And like, I, I don't, I hate to break it to you, but I don't think Michigan's getting the death penalty out of this. And I don't expect something dramatic this week either, but, you know, this is, this is kind of a weird situation. It's a little bit of an unprecedented situation. And so there's not, you know, there isn't a penalty specified in the NCAA rules. Like this is against the rules. If you did advanced scouting and, uh, you know, did use electronic and that kind of stuff, but there's not a specified penalty. So that could mean they can do kind of whatever they want. And then if they do whatever they want, does Michigan appeal? And does that drag it? Out? I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of different stuff that still needs to get sorted out. But, you know, even having done a show, you know, what, three hours ago or something like this, that just felt this just felt like, OK, let's just for the folks who are not on Twitter, bless your hearts. You're living your best life. Uh, but, if you know, you can uh, get a look at some of those photos, you know. And, and again, I as I said off the top, there is stuff that this does not necessarily mean, but it also means this is probably not some low level, nobody staffer who, you know, nobody, nobody knows, nobody knows who this guy is. It's that's probably not accurate. Either. Now, when you say the death penalty, I will just let you know that I have seen the FBI now tagged as a quote tweet for, uh, for your, your tweet there, Tom. So this may be, they may be, you know, kicking it up a couple of levels here and we'll, we'll see what happens. I will also predict Jim Harbaugh probably does not end up in Supermax for this either in Florence, Colorado. That that will be my second prediction, my second bold prediction of the week, Tony. No no death penalty for Michigan and no Supermax for Jim Harbaugh. We'll see. We'll see beyond that what happens. I'm, now I'm just imagining Jim Har Harbaugh like in a, a, a van being transported. And of course, now you've got some like maize and blue cars coming along and it's going to be some they're going to get him out of there and it's going to be a, a Harbaugh heist of some sort. The the uh, the gymnastics that Michigan folks are going through right now in terms of how you're, they're finding the one thing that doesn't mean it, that this is a criminal act or this is breaking the rules and they're hanging on to that. I, I they might want to wake their wake up a little bit and just I don't think this is going to go away and. In terms of the, the the penalties, like you said, it's unprecedented. I have to imagine the Big Ten is angrier than the NCAA, and I have seen some people on the Michigan side, in terms of like uh, bloggers and such, saying that well, the end. There's no way the playoffs or no way the networks are going to allow Michigan to be penalized this season because they need them in the playoffs. 
the, people are going to watch playoffs whether Michigan is in playoffs or not. So I don't think that will have anything to do with it. I think the the more legitimate reason there won't be anything this year is because the NCAA just moves pretty slowly. But this is also a living, breathing thing going on right now. This isn't something that they're investigating from two years ago, you know, because Rashawn Gary said, you know, turn down whatever from Clemson and sign with Michigan for no money where there's, you know, allegations or, or whatever. This isn't something that is old. This is something that has been going on and was going to go on this week, this past weekend at Ohio State, but didn't because Connor Stallions was suspended and his vast network didn't show up, allegedly didn't show up to the game on either side of the field where apparently they had, you know, somebody had tickets purchased for both sides of the field. So this is something that is present day and it's happening right now. And this has never happened before. So I I would be surprised if there is a commensurate never happened before type of punishment, but I don't think it'd be uncalled for. Yeah. I, I think it's all going to come down to what can they prove? And that's, that is always the case with the NCAA. And one of the issues the NCAA runs into in cases like this is that they don't have subpoena power. So you're kind of relying on, you know, in a case where it's a booster, you know, let, let's say it's a case from 15 years ago and it's a booster who gives a player, uh, you know, a bag of cash. And so you need someone to talk about that and testify to that, that this happened because, you know, the, the player is not going to get a receipt from the booster nor vice versa. There is not going to be a paper trail. There is not, you know, you and and they don't have subpoena power to get all the emails from this, you know, from the player or from the booster or whatever. They you're just you're kind of relying on the school to cooperate. This case, I mean, you can read media outlets speculating on which school is behind all of this, but you know, the, there is there is information that has been turned over or is in the process of being turned over from other schools that feel they were victims of this in the past. So then, you know, so then that sort of maybe shortcuts some of the NCAA's issues in some of these past cases. If these schools have, you know, figured this out, identified this, you know, it feels like right now someone, you know, this is not something that someone figured out 35 minutes before they released the information and this whole story broke. This is something that someone recognized a while ago, went back, figured out who it was, probably documented it in some way. I assume that's probably, you know, that video or photos or whatever that are going to document some of the stuff going on in the stands, perhaps. Supposedly, according to the Pete Thamel report, there's a school that found the seat that was sold to uh, Connor Stallions in one of these games. And there is a person sitting in that seat holding a phone pointed at the sideline for the whole game. You know, as as you can sort of collect that information that ends up building your case a lot stronger. And, you know, that might make this something that is not a six year Kansas, no real result kind of investigation, because a lot of the work may have been done in advance. And, you know, who, you know, as, as you said earlier, yeah, that these are the pictures that I found. Who knows what else is out there? I mean, that's, I, I have pictures. I, I will sometimes shoot pictures of like wide shots of the stands. So theoretically, could I have someone in one of those shots at some point? Maybe I, I can tell you after spending a whole night going through pictures from one game, I'm not interested in going through uh, pictures from every single Ohio state game the last couple of years to find uh, wide shots of the stands just on the off chance that someone's sitting there. But you know, who knows? I, I am not the only photographer down there on the sideline. So who knows? would also show up there, would also show up in the TV copies. I know there was a TV copy that showed up of a play somewhere where he was talking to Jesse Minter, it looked like, on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, talking to Jesse Minter, and then uh, a play gets blown up in the backfield. And just a total coincidence, I'm sure. Likely it was because Ohio State's running game last year was not great either. But the um, the fact that like in game, you can't use any electronic equipment to send signals in terms of stealing signals. And so this is what I said whenever we started talking about this uh, last week or a couple of days ago. I wouldn't be shocked if we see stallions on the sideline 
relaying information to the coordinators, whoever's calling the plays, because then you can get away with it. You can get away with that portion of it, but it's how the signals, uh, the information about the signals, how that was acquired. And that's where we're talking about the buying tickets for multiple Big Ten games over the last two plus years, three years. But I've, I've seen folks on the Michigan side saying, well, he's not going to those games. So it's not really a Michigan staffer that is advanced scouting. But to me, that it's kind of, I, I don't know if that's actually a gray area. And we don't know actually who he's sending because if you look on Twitter, if you go deep enough, there you can put some, some connections there. And it's unsubstantiated right now. So I don't want to get into that. But if the Michigan staffer is buying these, for the express purpose of getting that information, regardless of who is doing it, like why else is he buying these seats, Tom? Uh, is he just is this for Make a Wish? I mean, is this uh, you just just leave it for Elvis, like Jerry Glanville used to do? Like you're buying these to have people use them to spy on the opponent's play calling. Yeah, I, I think what you're seeing is, I mean, let's let's be cautious and let this all play out but i think what you're seeing in a, on a number of different fronts right now is areas of plausible deniability shrinking significantly okay you know there you know he hey there was on friday we did a show and it was not clear how this had all worked and it was just we had heard this guy's name and and the it was the alleged that he was there you know, at these games. And it was sort of implied that he was at these games scouting. And then picture showed up with him on the sidelines at Michigan at games. And it was like, okay, well, he couldn't have been doing that. So how did this happen? And then it sort of figured out, okay, it's, uh, it got floated on a Michigan site, actually, that this is how it was doing. He was, you know, uh, you know, he had, he had a network of folks going to these games for him, essentially. Uh, and then, uh, you know, getting the information back. And, you know, so that so that sort of takes that level of of plausible deniability, like, oh, no one knew anything about anything. Now you got, you know, he's standing right next to the defensive coordinator, standing right next to the offensive coordinator, standing right next to Jim Harbaugh. Like, OK, this is this is not this is not a nobody. This is someone who is, you know, th there's TV copy now where he's talking to Jesse Minter during games. OK, this is obviously someone who is, you know, random people are not random trainers are not going up and like talking to Jesse Minter while the defense is on the field. That you, it, That is. We've talked to coaches many times where they talk about the fact that, you know, the headsets, like you're keeping communication to an absolute bare minimum. It is the, the necessary communication because otherwise you're getting overwhelmed with too much information. So if you're getting communicated with, that information is pretty significant. So, okay, so this is not a nobody. And now this is the guy who's who's buying the tickets. So, yeah, let's let's see. Let's let the process play out. I, <clears throat> I don't want to dive too deep into you know the Venmo stuff there's 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 Venmo stuff that you know seems like it might line up with purchase of tickets and money's being sent to people who are um you know other staffers on the Michigan program low level folks at the Michigan program so you know and then then the dates and the the uh you know descriptions people are interpreting as you know this this lines up with this football game at this date and that kind of stuff and you know We'll we'll let that sort of sort itself out before we dive into real any real specifics there. But you just you're seeing a lot of the levels of plausible deniability kind of shrink down. And okay, so so the theory is that this guy is a nobody. Well, okay, now he's not a nobody. We know he's not a nobody. So okay, now it's something else. And you know, as as this sort of continues to develop, we'll continue to follow it. But uh, it just just very interesting, uh, very interesting stuff, Tony. The nice thing about shooting like four thousand pictures at football games is sometimes you find stuff you didn't know you were gonna ha you didn't know you were gonna need uh, eleven months ago. Hey, eleven out of four thousand—that's a pretty good, uh, <laughs> pretty good batting average, there, Tom. I I'm going to be interested to see whether other folks have stuff that corroborates this. That because I'm guessing that now that I did this, I'm going to guess other folks are probably going to do the same thing, and you know, other games too. Is he is he standing next to the offensive and defensive coordinators at the Penn State game? That would be interesting to find out. Is he standing next to the offensive defensive coordinators at the I don't know who they play last year at, at the TCU game like that? Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out. So yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But uh, just 
feel felt like this was worth another update tonight just to kind of keep you guys all in the loop. It wouldn't shock me if there are no pictures of him standing next to anybody at the TCU game. Because I it, it doesn't is TCU somebody that would you would go in advance scout, you know? He could be standing next to the TC to him, to folks at the TCU game once he, you know, there was there was a suggestion, and again, this is just a suggestion that they struggled so much against TCU because they had not scouted TCU because TCU was not one of the teams that they viewed as a likely college football playoff opponent. So, yeah, and that's just speculation by people online, but you know, even if that was the case. He is also supposedly be doing some of this stuff live, which is which is legal, which is totally legal. That is that is allowed. It's the advanced stuff that's not allowed. But you could still be standing there doing, you know, with whatever you're you're figuring out live. Yeah, I mean, that is his that would it's his LinkedIn specialty. So, you know, put it to good use. I, I before we close, I, not only do I think you'll see photographers going just because they're curious. But I bet you're going to have the, the the football staffs reaching out to the photographers as well, saying, "Hey, do you have anything?" And also, uh, every every football department has their own photographers. They're going to be pouring through everything to see, or already have. Um, I would bet already have. Yeah, yes, but they're also probably going to be reaching out to others as well. Like, hey, do you have anything? And I, like I said, Tom, no offense, I don't think you're going to be the last person to have. Uh, pictures of this and I'll be, I'll be interested to see how many other teams, schools, uh, will they, will photographers find something? So, a uh, very interesting, uh, Monday night, uh, into a, a early Tuesday morning for, uh, us here and hopefully for all of you. Uh, Tom, anything else before we go? No, I think that's uh, that'll cover it for now. And then, yeah, just be interested to see where this all where this all goes. Michigan thought they had a bye week this week. Turns out, no, still plenty of action going on. So um, that will do it for us. Want to thank you all for joining us. Plenty of talk about this over at BuckeyeHuddle dot com on the message board. If you become a member, you can take part in that. Of course, continue to find us at YouTube dot com slash Buckeye Huddle. Uh, hit the like, uh, hit like the hit the button to like us. Hit the notification to thumb us. All of that good stuff. So I want to thank you all for tuning in and I'll talk to you guys later.